dear students welcome to this new video tutorial of our programming series which is web programming using asp.net so students till the time in this particular series we have seen all the basic concept or you can say theoretical fundamental concept of asp.net carrying this thing forward today we will see about asp.net waveforms Till the time we have seen .NET framework architecture, the components such as CLS, CTS, CLR and all these things, right. Now today we will see the web terminologies and ASP.NET waveforms. So if we talk about ASP.NET waveforms, the first thing we will be covering today in this particular tutorial is, yes, as you can see ASP.NET web page life cycle, right. So what is this life cycle? What can be done in this particular life cycle? what happens when a particular web page is requested, executed and destroyed that will be covered in this particular topic. So watch this video till the end and let's get started. So as you can see if we talk about defining ASP.NET or any web page lifecycle it is sequence of particular stages that will be executed in a particular order from requesting a web page to destroying the web page or ending the web page. So as you can see that will be the sequence of stages or some events that has to be executed in particular order, right. So entire web page life cycle is divided into different stages. The stages will start when we request a particular web page to when it will be ended or destroyed. So now if you see this particular stages they are page request, start, initialize, load, right. We will see all these details and all the stages in particular depth later on. So request, start, initialize and load. These are the four basic or first phase of life cycle, right. Now if we talk about another four stages after loading a web page, the next stage is validation post back handling, rendering and unload, right. So if we talk about entire web page life cycle, as you can see over here is page request, start, initialize, load. That is the first half of a life cycle, right. Then after validation, post back, rendering and unload. So these are the web pages or these are the stages of a particular web page life cycle. Now you might be having a question what are the stages right what happens in this particular stage. So we will see each and every stage in detail now. So the first stage is request or page request right. In this particular stage user through its browser will type the requested URL or web page such as let us assume www.google.com. Right. In this particular scenario, me as a client is typing google.com. So what I am said to be done? I am requesting that particular web page, right. In this particular scenario, another thing will be defined is whether to send this page as a fresh copy or it is to be passed. Now if we send this a page as a fresh copy, it will be executed from the scratch and if it is passed, it will be executed from the cached copy or the cached copy itself will be displayed. Now the second stage is start. At this stage actual life cycle begins cause request is not particularly considered in the life cycle. So the actual life cycle begins at this stage and it will be determined that if that is to be responded or requested right. If page is requested then what is to be given as a response or we as a server has to request something. So request and response properties are set. So these are the two basic stages of web page life cycle which is page request and start. Now the third thing or the third stage is initialization or init or page initialization right. So in the page initialization server actually starts sending the page to the client right. All the controls properties unique IDs everything is set as written over here right. So in initialization server has checked that this particular web page which user has requested 
or I has requested in our example it is google.com so the server of Google will determine that if the page is existed or not and if existed then it will start sending me the page the fourth stage as you can see is load so in this particular stage the page will be loaded completely into client browser right so now in this particular stage what will happen once the page is loaded into browser what is the next step yes the next step is to apply the formatting the css and the scripting you might have heard the name javascript or any other scripting as well as css so page is loaded completely into the browser css or any other formatting and scripting are applied and executed so over here your half of the web page life cycle is done where page was requested the process has started server starts sending the page so page initialization and page has completely arrived at the browser let us assume we want to sign up for a particular website right gmail.com or facebook.com or any other website so we have requested that page server has sent the page now we will have a blank form now the fifth stage is validation now what is validation that will be covered is a particular separate session in validation controls but as of now in the shortest term i will tell you validation is a process where we will check if user has entered proper or valid data or not right if user is entering garbage data or user is leaving the fields empty right for example in phone number we are typing a b c d so that is not a valid data so this all type of validations will be covered in this particular stage and we will ensure that page has valid data now there is a difference between correct data and valid data right if we talk about phone number 989898989898 so that is a 10 digit phone number that is a valid as per our standards but is it correct that cannot be done in esp.net as of now that will not be checked over here in validation stage what will be checked is user has entered valid data that can be done with the help of validation controls right the next step is post back handling or event handling of a post back in this stage as we have already stated over here is the code or the page will be sent back to the server for execution why because the name itself of the technology says asp.net active server pages so the every code or actual code of asp.net will be sent to server only code execution will be done on this server so the data that user has filled up which is a valid data because we have done it in a validation stage that will be sent back to the server for executions right all the session of user all the data related user will be saved and mapped accordingly now what happens after sending data for processing yes to be obvious the code and data has to be executed on the server so that is the task of our another particular stage rendering rendering is nothing but executing the code right and what happens after executing the code the reply has sent back to the client so rendering includes execution of code and sending the acknowledgements or answers or you can say output back to the client and the last stage which is unload now we do not need to uh, go in the depth of this particular stage because the name itself suggests unload unload means we are destroying the page once my sign up is done i am closing the tab right so that is known as unload so these are the web page life cycle through which a particular dotnet web page pass through again we will be repeating the stages because it is very important concept from academic point of view as well as from the point of view of learning this technology right so page request start initialize load validation event handling rendering and unload so unload and page request should not be considered as a core life cycle so your life cycle stage is nothing but silver that is the short form of web page life cycle start initialize load validate event handling rendering silver right and before starting we will have page request and after rendering we will have 
unload. So that is the basic concept of web page lifecycle. I hope you have understood this concept. Now that is the end of the topic but we are not ending this video as of now. We are not ending this session. We will have some MOOC questions or brain twisters. So the questions has been listed over here and these questions can be answered by you in comment section. Apart from that, if you are having any query regarding ASP.NET, you can write us in the comment section as well where we will try to give the answer in the best possible way. So the questions are what is web page lifecycle? Right? You need to define what is web page lifecycle. State out the stages of ASP.NET web page lifecycle. Now, if page request is done at the lifecycle and we are not connected to internet, will this web page lifecycle be completed or not? The next question is after loading a web page, what if user has not entered proper data? Then will this lifecycle be considered and completed for sending the data and code to be executed on the server? Which is the event that is responsible for executing the code of ASP.NET? What if while sending the data we are having internet connectivity issues? Then will this data be sent to the server back or it will reach to the client as intended? Right? And some events or code can be done on this web page lifecycle. So you need to list me out the events of ASP.NET regarding the stages. You can find this event in our Visual Studio ID when we create the website. So list out that events as well. Right. So that is it for our MOOC questions. Already MOOC questions has been listed over here. The same questions are available in the description box as well. Try to give the answers in the comment section and as I have already told, if you are having some queries, write us in the comment section as well. So that is it for today's session. I hope you like this video. Like this video, share this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.